Okay, so in this video, what we're going to look at is the R squared value. Now we've calculated it previously, but I wanted to go through how the interpretation of the R squared, the coefficient of determination works. And that is based on how much we've reduced the range of variability in our predictions of Y relative to with and without our X information. So the way that we're gonna do this is, again, I'm gonna calculate, we calculated in a previous video, the predicted values based on our regression and the residual values from the difference between our amount spent and our predicted Y values. And so what I wanna do is I wanna copy these into another sheet and then continue with our discussion of this R squared value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of these and I'm gonna paste them as values so that I don't have to worry about uh, the formulas having a uh, weird reference. Okay, so what we wanna calculate is the original variability in the Y value. So, we're going to calculate, and in, in these uh, examples, we're going to use the variance rather than the standard deviation, uh, because that's how the interpretation is going to play out. So, the variance of the original y and that is the var dot s calculation. That's our original variance. Now we're also going to calculate the variance of the predicted y. Which is bar dot s this column. And we're also going to calculate the variance. Actually, let me write it label. Variance of the residuals. Bar dot s of the residuals. Now, one way you may see the R squared calculated is essentially by one minus. say R squared is equal to one minus the var of the original, um, one minus the variance of the residuals divided by the variance of the original Y. Now that's because this is the variance of the residuals is the amount of variability that's left over after we have accounted for the relationship between X and Y. So let us actually calculate this ratio and see what happens. So var, var residuals over var Y. bar residuals divided by bar y. And then we calculate um, r squared is going to be 1 minus that value. That number looks suspiciously familiar, doesn't it? Because that's also the r squared value known y's, known x's. Now, the other way that you can calculate it is r squared is the, vari the variance of the predicted y's divided by the variance of the original. So this is essentially um, what's left over 
after, you know, when you're doing your predictions, what variability is left in Y and the original one. And again, this is without the one minus, that's going to be the variance of the predicted Ys divided by the variance of the original Ys. And again, we get the same value. Now, what again, what does this all mean? Well, it's a ratio, remember, it's a ratio of these variable, the variance is a measure of the variability. And it's a ratio of what was before we did the regression and what is left after we did the regression. And so what's left after, this is the variability left afterwards. And this is the, the variability we have gotten rid of. We have accounted for. With X. So the 97.9, 97 97.99% that we've accounted for here we're essentially saying this is the amount of variability we can account for because we know there is a relationship between the Y variable and the X variable. And in our example, between the amount spent and the customer age. On the other hand, what we're left with is basically about 2% of the variability remains as part of the error. So this is why in, that, in a previous video, we talked about the size of that error being relative to the size of the range of our Y values. Um, we needed to have very, very large errors relative to that in order to get very little, get that correlation reduced because there was still a lot of variability in the error that we weren't accounting for. But as long as it was relatively small relative to the size of our, our Y range, then we were able to account for most of the variability by relating it to Y. So we're again, we're talking about in the original Y variable, if we have no idea about how it relates to anything, our best prediction for the amount of variability is related to this variance. But if we know there's a relationship to the X value, and in this case, a very strong relationship to the X variable, we can actually account for most of that difference, most of that wiggle room, most of that change, because we know about this relationship. That's what this variance of the predicted Y is. This is the amount that we can account for by that relationship. And then what's unaccounted for is just the variance of the residuals. And that is that 2% variability that is left. If our variance, remains bigger for the residuals, that error that we saw increasing in that previous video, then this will naturally get smaller because it will be a smaller percentage that's, uh, though it'll be a larger percentage of the error that is left over when we've done accounting for that trend. So that's how we interpret this. So it is the, the coefficient of determination, the R squared value, it is the amount of variability in Y that we can account for by relating Y to the X variable, in this case, H. And so that one minus that is the amount of variability that is unaccounted for by this relationship that remains essentially still to be explained. 